Alright, so this is my BTEC sampling and synthesis assessment conversion for it. Alright, so first, in this first video I'm going to be talking you through some of the synthesizers I used in this piece. So first of all I'm going to be talking you through this one here which is called Breathing Lead on my computer. However, it's not called Breathing Lead, it's an unnamed massive preset I made, pre massive synth I made. So the way I've made this one is quite basic. This one is only utilising one oscillator. It is using a tiny little bit of vibrato, as you can see here. And the vibrato is assigned to Macro 1, named vibrato. So what's happening here is I've set the wavetable position all the way to the right, which determines that this oscillator is only playing as a saw wave. So what's happening with this little green section here on the pitch is I have assigned a step performer to be capable of modulating from as high as three octaves, aka 36 semitones, back down to the root position as zero. So what's happening here is I've set each one of these to four by using snap to grid, which allows me to go up in equal, equal gaps every time as opposed to having to very, very carefully and precisely go up by 0 0.01 every time, which is a pain in the ass. But yeah, so for all of these, I've set it, set it to four. By setting it to four, that is dividing that by three. The maximum it can go up by is 12. 12 divided by three is four. 36 divided by 3 is 12, meaning these are jumping up by, these are causing variations of 12 semitones. I've set the rate up on this very, really quite high. So the um, what's happening is, because of the high rate, every time one of these very short little audio sections, these MIDI sections is played, it is running through a series of these very quickly. So, yeah, that is, a, that is pretty much everything for this synthesizer. Sounds like this. Obviously then combined with a compressor, a channel equaliser, and an echo. So without the echo, sounds like... So the second one I'm going to be running through is very, even more basic than that synthesizer I made on Massive, which is a crude wave, crude oscillator, which is an analog electric wave. So as you can see, the ampl amplifier for oscillator 2 and oscillator 3, the amplitude, sorry, is completely off, which means these oscillators are effectively useless. They are creating no sound whatsoever. Neither is the modulation oscillator, which can also be turned off, and the noise oscillator, which can also be turned off, as none of these are having any impact on the sound whatsoever, so also from the feedback. Alright, so, this one here, but the green line all the way around it, the green line represents LFO5, uh, symbolised sorry, by this little green 5 here in the bottom left-hand corner of the wavetable position. Now what this is doing, is causing fluctuations of the wavetable position from as low as there all the way to the top of the wavetable wave table position. Now what this is doing is causing this to move from there to there very quickly. It's doing it every 24th of a beat. So yeah, very quickly. So it's doing it quick enough for it not to make a serious impact on the sound whatsoever. Um, other things on this one, on this synthesizer, is really not much whatsoever. This is going. This is being fed also through FX1, which is a chorus effect set to just below halfway or just above a quarter, in between the two really, of the dry wet controller, and the rate is up just between just between three quarters and halfway. Yeah. 
that's really all there is to this one and a tiny bit of EQ. Generally I don't use my I don't use the EQs built into Massive as I prefer to do all of the equalizing external to the software. External to the VST. Moving onwards, and the next one I'll be showing is this one here. This is a arpeggiator I made. This arpeggiator is a polyphonic synthesizer made using an analog electric wave oscillator called Dry 2, Dry 1, sorry, Additive Mix 3, as well as Rough Math 2. Now, all of these, there is not too much going on on any of these oscillators, although all three are in use as well as the modulation oscillator. Noise and feedback can be turned off as there's nothing going through those whatsoever. Now, the wavetable position for my first oscillator is, pan is panned all the way to the left, it's moved all the way to the left. The intensity and the amplitude are both up all the way. The filter controller is up completely, is up as high as it will go to F1, meaning it's being fed through F1 as opposed to being fed through both of them as if it was in the middle position. Additive mix, wavetable position midway, and so on, and so on. So. Yeah, the low pass filter here is taking out a little bit of the high end so the sound isn't too harsh. The resonance is quite low, so there's another little bit of low end being high end, sorry, being taken out of that. So th this oscillator here had it wouldn't work if it wasn't polyphonic and being triggered always. Because that way only one of the note only one of these notes here would be playing at any given time and it would not arpeggiate correctly. Again, there is really very little going on within Logic on this one. Uh, the voicing here, max, just shows the amount of time, the amount of different MIDI notes that can be played at any given time. So this is a max of 16, which is a ridiculously high number, and I can't imagine anybody ever using, every, ever needing to play 16 notes on one synthesizer at any given time. I think that's a bit ridiculous. Um, so all of the other work on this is being done externally. Yeah, all of it. Got a bit crusher, compressor, channel equalizer, and of course the arpeggiator. Now, next of all, one of the last synthesizer I'm going to be sorry, one of the last synthesizers I'm going to be demonstrating is this one here, Instrument Nine. Instrument Nine is an explosive electronic dubstep esque synthesizer designed to add a lot of excitement to the crescendo in the piece, sounding like this. This one. So that one, that is being done using a square wave set to the format setting, which manipulates the harmonics to give very different sound. To make that sound even audible I had to pitch it down by at least 36 semitones. I went down by 48 to give it a bit more, to give a bit more of a pulsating feel. Um, to get that explosive sound at the very start, what I did was I made this envelope here on envelope one, put, assigned that to the pitch controller. I set that to go from minus three octaves to minus four which is what gives it that huge impact sound. But the fourth envelope is unchanged from the native instrument standard. The only other effects on this really happening as all of the oscillators are turned off, except for the modulation os oscillator, which is putting a bit of phase, really minute amount, you can see the difference there. But that minute amount of phase makes an enormous difference, it's crazy. So yeah, that is going, being fed through oscillator one. Filters turned off. I was experimenting with that, but couldn't get anything I liked, so that's turned off, didn't really need it. And then it's going through effects two, which is a brawner tube, turned down the dry wet and had the drive turned up a bit, which means only a little bit of the sound is being affected by a lot of drive. Well, not really a lot of drive, but a bit of drive. Dimension expander, same principle really, only what the dimension expander is doing is it is changing the stereo spread of the sound, making it a lot wider, making, giving it a lot more depth and 
making it sound generally more interesting. So the way that's working is I've got the dry wet turned down just below a quarter of the way up. That is meaning that only a little bit, only a quarter of the sound is being affected by the dimension expander. But that quarter that is being affected is being affected by just over half, the, is, being, is having just over half the size added to it. So when I play the sound, you can see instead of both of these being up all the way and being level with each other, they are fluctuating. The left and right are fluctuating, as so. Just a tiny bit, but yeah, that's what happens when you use a dimension expander. Now, the last synthesizer I will be showing is my 808-esque kick drum. Because yes, I love trap music, and I just thought it would be fun to put an 808 in there. So the 808 is probably the most basic synth in this entire equation here. So what's going on here is none of the other oscillators are actually necessary whatsoever. So I'm just going to turn all of those off now. Yep, yeah, all of them. These inserts, by the way, that's like an auxiliary send on a, on a mixing desk. So what's going on here? No, none of the filters are needed. Nothing, none of the effects are used. So this is a sine wave that's been pitched down by two octaves, also, well, 24 semitones, same thing. Uh, the envelope, envelope one, is modulating the pitch of this one by one octave, meaning it's going from one octave down from zero to two octaves down from the root position. Root position being whichever note you play on the keyboard, it will come out audible as two octaves lower. Um, yeah, and then the envelope four, which is controlling the master output, is set to have the attack all the way down, the level all the way up, which means it's kicking, basically. It is a kick drum, it is kicking. Uh, yeah, no delay, because why would you want delay on a kick drum? Um, decay is set to quite high up because I wanted a very long kick sub bass tail. Works quite nicely for the sound I was after, and I've succeeded in making it, thank God. Alright, so that is the synthesis side of my assessment. Thank you very much.